All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Maura Castles. I'm the Regional Vice President for University Relations in the Northeast. I am joined today by my colleague, Paula. Paula, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Paula Messina. I um, am the University Rep for AIFS Customized Faculty-Led Programs based in Los Angeles. Excellent. And we are joined by Sadie. Sadie, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi there. I'm Sadie. I am a senior at Champlain College, which is in Vermont. I studied abroad with AIFS in the fall of 2019 in Berlin. And yeah, I'm graduating in a couple weeks. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, and Alexis, could we hear from you as well? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexis Boisard, and I am one week away from being um, an official alumna from yeah. Wright State University in Dayton, mm -hmm. Ohio. Very exciting. Um, and I studied abroad in, with AIFS in the fall of 2019 semester in London, England. Nice. Excellent. Um, so we are here today to celebrate Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Um, and we are talking about practicing sustainability while studying abroad. We are going to talk a little bit about AIFS um, just in general. AIFS has been around since 1964. We have programs all over the world um, from a span of two weeks up into a year. You can do study abroad, internship programs, community engagement, service learning. Um, you can do programs that are either thematic, meaning you're looking at a topic, or location-based, meaning you're based in a location and you're taking a variety of courses. Um, you can do programs that are language acquisition based or you can go to a program location having no prior language experience. We work with students from all majors um, and in some program locations you can even you know focus on one area or topic. You could even get a certification in a particular area of study um, or you know you could take a wide range of maybe um, general education courses. Um, our programs are open from graduating high school seniors through graduating college seniors and some of our internship programs are even open um, for non-credit uh, to, to students that are at the graduate level and even beyond. Um, and one thing we love to talk about is how our all-inclusive programming is guaranteed in US dollars. So you can really um, plan for your academic experience from a budgetary perspective as well. Um, the all-inclusive program fee I mentioned includes housing, um, in, which is going to be arranged by AIFS, our on-site staff, um, will arrange your housing, your meal plan, your activities, your excursions. Um, your on-site staff will be in charge of the cultural calendar and cultural programming. They're there as a support if you should need anything at all. Um, your health and travel insurance is included in that, as well as your optional flight and transportation package um, is, is something that we can book for you. And um, we can also provide alumni programming. So our alumni ambassadors who are here today are involved in the alumni programming that we AIFS set up for students. Paula, is there anything you would like to add from the AIFS perspective? Um, well, I think that students, especially for first time travelers, right, students who haven't ever traveled before, having AIFS as, you know, someone who will help them set up everything from their, um, their trip over, right? Their flights over, airport pickup. They don't have to worry about what's going to happen when I get there. You know, you're going to see someone with that sign and that friendly face. And um, through the housing, you know, it's housing that you, um, that AIFS has vetted and that students have evaluated. And so it it's also great for, for parents. And I can say that as a, from a parent perspective too, because I was an AIFS parent. Um, my son did an AIFS parent, uh, program to Costa Rica. And even though he had a little bit of travel experience on his own a little bit, 
um, I still felt a lot better knowing that he was going and everything was set up for him. Absolutely. I think that's a really great point. Um, of course, you know, sustainability is the topic that we're here to discuss today. And it's a topic that is, you know, increasingly important around the world. Um, and it's something that has been on the um, our radar for a couple of years now. Um, our partner organization, um, one of the AIFS program, you know, under under the AIFS uh, umbrella of programs is Global Experiences, and they have spearheaded um, the Global Experiences Green Initiative, which we will be adopting as the AIFS uh, Abroad Green Initiative. And so I have um, a quick video that I want to show that is going to talk about the Green Initiative in 2020. Um, it will be um, it will be adapted to all AIFS abroad programming for 2021. So I'm going to share that now. In January of 2020, Global Experiences launched its green initiative. The purpose of this initiative is simple. Become carbon neutral by 2025 in response to the overwhelming global climate crisis. To begin, we determined that our main focuses would be, first and foremost, offsetting the flights of all interns on our programs by supporting diverse climate projects, and second, adding a green education to the intern experience from start to finish. We believe that in a world where our individual and collective actions make a difference, it's our duty to implement green and sustainable practices wherever possible. We hope that interns are excited to make sustainable choices with global experiences and that other organizations are inspired to adopt similar practices. We calculated that during the spring of 2020, interns on our programs around the world had flights that produced 338 tons of carbon emissions. We then offset these emissions with the purchase of carbon credits at no additional cost to the interns. The projects we chose to support are reforestation in Australia, safe water access in Rwanda, and wind power in India. We're proud to help interns reduce their carbon footprints and prioritize sustainability through these important projects. As for the green education part of our initiative, we incorporated resources for interns to use throughout their programs. Their pre-departure orientation contains resources about how to be green in their cities, how to pack and travel in a more sustainable way, as well as how to reduce and recycle while abroad. Upon arrival, their orientation emphasizes these key topics and engages them with green challenges throughout their time abroad. While our green initiative is just getting started, we're so excited to see where it takes us and to continue adding new processes to meet our challenge of carbon neutrality by 2025. In the words of our founder and CEO, Global Experiences was founded to make the world a better place, and we can no longer deliver on this vision without a serious commitment to protecting the environment. Great. And so um, something important to keep in mind is that now that- So I suggest we start, good morning and- One moment. I have to get rid of that. And we're back in business. Oh, YouTube. <laughs> I thought about it too, as right. it was happening. I thought, ooh, this is gonna autoplay into something else. Um, I think there was a question in the chat, Paula, is that something I can? Yeah, so how can we as individuals bring, oh, sorry, it's dropped on me. Hold on a second. Um, bring the narrative becoming carbon neutral outward into larger scale change aside from writing and calling our local state representatives. That's a really, that's a very good question. And I'm gonna, I definitely want to, to touch on that. Um, I'm going to, talk a little bit more about the green initiative and I want to give our alumni uh, a chance to talk about 
sustainability in their program locations. Right. And then we definitely will want to talk a little bit about that um, from a domestic perspective, for sure. Is that all right, Austin? Um, in order to uh, to touch on the global experiences green initiative and um, sort of excellent uh, and sort of how it touches in or how it sort of ties into AIFS abroad um, global experiences is now part of the AIFS abroad family of programs and it was one of the um, one of their projects that we thought was absolutely fantastic and something that we wanted to adopt for all AIFS abroad programming so um, the idea is that uh, we will be able to offset the environmental impact of international education programming and strive to be carbon neutral by 2025. That is still something that we are hoping to, um, to maintain as a goal. Um, we've taken some small steps forward already. Oh, in some cases, very weighty steps. We used to have these very large printed catalogs, which we love very much, but which we realized were not uh, the most uh, sustainable for the environment. Um, another step we're taking is to be more mindful in our work travel. Um, and also to, uh, you know, the, the 338 tons of carbon credits that were purchased for the spring 2020 intern participants. Yeah. Also in our group travel, right, when we're abroad, we have made the promise of looking into more sustainable travel for our groups. So instead of private buses using more public transportation yeah, there. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, sustainability has been taken into consideration in um, all of the pre-departure materials. Um, and that was a project that was um, part of the Alumni Ambassador uh, program this year, was to look at sustainability from sort of a holistic standpoint. One of the things that um, some of the Alumni Ambassadors were working on were, you know, what are some ideas for integrating sustainability into study abroad in general, you know, what are some ways, you know, is it is it going to be to look at, um, uh, you know, bar conditioner instead of a conditioner that involves, you right. know, plastic bottles and things right. like that. And so, um, you know, just seeing what small steps every student can take, because really when you augment the number of students who are studying abroad in the large numbers that they are, we can really make a difference if we all make the effort to. Um, so let's go to our panel here. Um, I am going to have, um, I'm going to ask Sadie if you could start uh, on this question again. Um, you studied abroad in Berlin. Um, why did you decide to study abroad and how did you select your study abroad location? Sure. All right. So yeah, like you said, I studied abroad in Berlin. Uh, I took German in high school and in college, and it has always been my dream to study there. Um, so I was really glad that AIF has had a program there. And I was lucky enough to grow up and be able to travel pretty frequently because my mom's a travel writer. And so I knew I wanted to study abroad, absolutely, for sure, because I recognized the great impact that it already has had on my life. Um, and that's basically the whole decision right there. But um, it was one of the best decisions. This, <laughs> yeah. Um, and while we have you, what uh, were some of the first observations you made related to sustainability while you were abroad? I know Germany is, is one of those locations probably where you had a, a lot of initial um, observations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely noticed it pretty much as soon as I got into the airport. Um, their trash system is extremely sophisticated, I guess you'd say. There's like five different types of waste that you can have, it's just trash, paper recycling, glass recycling, food, like organic materials, <laughs> compost and stuff like yeah. that. So that was a big one. Um, and the fact that you have to pay for bags at the grocery store, um, things like that, and the prevalence of public transportation. Those are the three big ones off the bat um, that I noticed immediately. Yeah, excellent. 
Excellent. Um, Alexis, if you could talk about why did you decide to study abroad and how did you pick your program location? And then um, some of the observations that you made related to sustainability while you were there. Yeah, definitely. So one of the like biggest reasons why I chose to study abroad in the first place was really just to get a sense of independence um, and kind of adulting for the first time, um, because it was the first time that I had moved away from living with my parents and, and really the first time I had ever traveled outside of the country, let alone living in another foreign country. Um, so that, and I also went to, I go to a university that's very close to home. So I've, I've lived close to home pretty much my entire life. So going abroad was really that first opportunity for me to really get a sense of, do I even like international travel? Like, what if I get a job where I have to move across the country or even across the world? Um, so I kind of wanted to set myself up for success. And I also am just, I have a travel bug anyway. Um, so going abroad was the, the perfect opportunity for me really. Um, and I decided to go with AIFS just because they had a semester long program um, pretty much anywhere in the world. But I, I've always been interested in London really um, because I, I'm also an English major. So naturally a lot of the literature and just a lot of my education has been from British authors and, and people who have lived in, in London and just anywhere else in England and have connections to England um, in terms of history and just all kinds of different layers of complexity. Um, so going there and being able to study things that pertain to my major, my English major, was really important to me. Um, one of the classes I took was called British Fantasy Writing, and we actually got credit for studying things like Harry Potter, The Hobbit, which I think is so cool, because like over here in the United States, like there's not even a class about, I guess that would be kind of more related to the pop culture. So it was really cool that I got that opportunity to, to understand not only the pop culture relevance, but but its connections with British history and, and all that kinds of stuff. Um, so those are a couple of reasons why I decided to study abroad in the first place and also pick London. Um, and for me, really, one of the biggest like impacts, I think, when I moved in, and started to live in Europe was really how how seriously they take um, sustainability and, and creating a, an environment where it's sustainable and for people to live and experience in the future. Because um, I can remember, not specifically in London, but um, AIFS provided um, a really big group trip for everyone to go to Paris for a weekend. And the particular weekend that I got to go to Paris with a bunch of AIFS students was also the same weekend as the Extinction Rebellion protests that were happening all over the world. Um, and that was kind of, uh, you know, a series of protests that happened in very large cities around the world at the same weekend, um, kind of related to climate crisis. Um, and it, I mean, that particular protests and if you know anything about Paris people love to voice their political their political hearts out and there's always protests happening over there um, and in that weekend that I went there the extinction rebellion literally stopped the city um, and some of the public transport that we we had access to we didn't have access to because this protest literally shut down things and really made the whole world stop and say hey we gotta we gotta look at this and, and figure out what what do we need to do differently to create a world where everyone, you know, my children and my grandchildren and their grandchildren can, can live and, and be able to breathe happily. Um, so just that particular um, event, and especially with that happening in September, very early on in my program was really one of the coolest like cultural experiences I had ever experienced. And, you know, environmental concerns aside, that was really the, the biggest like protests I'd ever seen. And it was just so cool to see um, so many people engaged with, with a cause like that. And it, and it just, you know, coming back, I, I really appreciate and, and kind of understand and have, you know, taken more steps to educate myself and what kind of things I can be doing to create a more sustainable future for my friends and just, just anyone in general too. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we have a question in the chat for Sadie. Um, Austin asks, uh, well, he comments that uh, Germany is known as one of the countries of the world that has the a high public uh, slash happiness scale. Um, what were your main differences between living there and living in America? Which is a really good question. Um, Yes, that is a, a great question, a big question. Yeah, um, narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I don't know, there's this uh, kind of stereotype, I guess, about Germany that people are very direct and, mm. and not like happy all the time, but regard, like it's completely the opposite. There are d very direct people. It's a very direct culture, but that doesn't mean they're like super rigid and like mm. hard, you know? Yeah. When I was there, I noticed that I was welcomed pretty much everywhere. I'm not saying that it's a perfect society because it's definitely not. There are issues just like anywhere else, but it's a way more friendly place than I thought it was going to be. Um, main difference is living there and here. Um, well, I just, I live in a very small town in Vermont right now, and it was a really big city, so that was an adjustment. Um, and I, I live in an, like an earthy country, like I'm in Vermont, it's like we're super sustainable and, and like down to earth and all this stuff. But um, it's not, it's just like a basic fact of life in Germany. Um, they, before I even went there, I knew that it was a place that took the sustainability really seriously. And I didn't even realize the extent of that until I got there. And I adopted a bunch of practices just from living there. Um, I, yeah, this is, sorry, <laughs> this is such a big question, I don't know. No, it's, you're um, answering, you're doing a great job. Okay, cool. You are, you are. Yeah, but every person that I met there was very welcoming, and uh, I really enjoyed it, and I want to go back. <laughs> yeah, um, that does bring us to one of the, one of the, um, yeah, one of the, one of the questions that we were hoping to ask, which is, what are some of the practices that you did bring home um, from from being abroad um, did you did you want to continue on on that while while you were talking and then I'll ask Alexis the same question after sure sure yeah um, so I lived with a host family so I got to see all of these things firsthand and I basically I had to integrate them into my life in order mm -hmm. to be a respectful guest and just like get along in the house uh, which I loved and like the first thing is that they don't shop like Americans shop mm -hmm. at grocery stores. We had a grocery store right across the street and one like a five minute walk. And we would be there every couple of days. Um, there'd be like one mildly big shop where you buy some like grains and pasta and stuff. And then every so often fresh produce. And it's a really great way to reduce food waste. Um, Cause you don't just stock up your fridge with all this stuff. And then you're like, oh no, I forgot about the spinach. It's all like wilted and gross now. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the major things that I've changed about my life. I don't need a full fridge or full pantry anymore. I can just like cook what I have and then go restock every couple of days. Um, that's a big one. And the sorting of the trash, we don't have as sophisticated as a system as Germany or Berlin does but I do make more of a conscious effort to like separate at least the compost from everything else and the walking around I think anyone who goes abroad to study abroad and you just you don't have a car anymore or whatever um, they'll tell you that they did a lot of walking it's true I did I put thousands of miles on my good old walking shoes but um that is also something that I have integrated more into my life. Like, I, I like walking around my city now, and I thought it was a chore before, but um, those are the main things. Definitely the shopping thing, for sure. Yeah. So that's Please. a great one. Yeah. Also, yeah, absolutely. Also, like, taking trains um, for long-distance travel. Like, I would... I... Before, I would say, like, I'd rather take a plane to go to, I don't know, like, I, I can't even think, like, Washington, D.C. I'd, like, I'd fly to Washington, D.C., but now I, I think I would I'd probably take a high-speed train. It's very interesting. I've never done a long, like, long train travel before, um, but that is also another point. Fantastic. Yeah. Alexis, how about you? What are some of the things you brought back from the practices you brought back from being abroad sustainability wise? 
Yeah, I brought back a lot of like useful like tips and tricks, I suppose. And I kind of like transformed like some habits like within my own personal family too. Like I know like in our kitchen, like we have a, a trash can that like pulls out from like, it's like a cabinet drawer kind of a thing. Um, and we had two like trash bins and we always just use that, you know, fill both of them up for trash. And when I came back, I was like, hey, we should probably like use one of those for recycling. And my dad's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, Cause we, where we live, like we don't have um, public, what is it called? Like trash service, like come to collect trash. So my dad always has had to take it to his place of work and, and put it in their dumpsters. Um, so we have like, you know, half of our trash can now, like just for recycling. Um, so that's just, you know, a personal decision like within my family that, that we can do. Um, and then with, with driving, it's where I live, it's still very difficult. Like I have to have a car to be able to go to school and to be able to go to work, unfortunately. Um, there's no like public transport, um, like easy access points where I live, which when I actually came back, I was looking more into the public transport system that is in my area or in like the Dayton, Ohio um, city. Um, and like wondering like, oh, I wish like there was more access to like other places um, than just like downtown Dayton. Um, so I was kind of like missing the fact that I was able to use public transport all the time. Um, and even when I wasn't using public transport, I very much like to walk rather than, than driving just to be able to experience more. And I think like any city in the world is so much better experienced walking. Um, and even like, you know, Sadie was talking about plane versus train train 100% like over the plane, just cause you get to see more. And especially um, when I went to um, Italy, I like tried to take trains between all the cities instead of like flying. Um, and I was able to see like the Swiss Alps from the ground and it was just spectacular. Um, and in fact, I have a trip planned with friends to actually go to Seattle and I'm over here in Ohio and my other friend is over in Boston. So we're going to take a cross country train ride over to nice. Seattle, which is, it's going to be like three days long, but it's, we figure it's safer, you know, with some airlines, like, you know, with social distancing and, you know, some of them aren't doing it. Um, so we're going to do like a cross country train ride, which is going to be so much fun because I've never like been on a train ride in the US before. So that's something really fun. And then just like other little things, I, I try to um, use reusable bags whenever I go shopping um, over in Europe. Kind of what Sadie had mentioned, um, big bags aren't even available or if they are, you have to pay a couple of euros just to even get them. Um, so I always use um, re reusable bags whenever I can. And I also use reusable cups too. Um, one of the, the closest grocery stores to me when I lived in London was actually Whole Foods and they had like a little cafe, you know, coffee bar inside of the, the restaurant or not the restaurant, the grocery store. And I would go there so frequently, similar to what Sadie had mentioned, like you make more frequent grocery stops during the week. One, just because I had a smaller fridge. So I kind of had to to adapt to that kind of lifestyle. Um, but I also am a person who likes an afternoon coffee every single day. Um, and they were having a sale one time um, with these reusable glass cups and I don't have it. I, if I had it in front of me, I would show it to you. Um, but they, they give a discounted price on the coffee that you're getting if you give them the reusable cup. Now with the pandemic, it's a little bit different, you know, practices are, I hope, you know, those kind of, um, you know, options become more available. Um, but back then before the pandemic happened, I was able to give them my cup and get like 75 cents off of my drink just for not, not using a, a paper cup or plastic cup, whatever was available. Um, and also like straws, not really a thing <laughs> over in London. Um, so I just had to get used to like drinking out of a cup, which was totally fine um, because I am, you know, able-bodied. I don't like need to use a straw. Um, but yeah, just a lot of like little little decisions and, and also just being more aware of where I'm really putting my money um, in terms of buying groceries, what companies I support um, and, and making sure that where I'm putting my money um, that those companies, because I, I really think that, you know, these, these really big corporations have su such a larger impact on, on creating a sustainable future um, over, you know, the small decisions that I make every day. Um, so where I decide to put my money and, and putting, doing, taking the time to research, you know, what companies are making those really good decisions. Um, and also, you know, deciding where to study abroad, you know, a company like AIFS, who is, has made this declaration that they are committed to, to, you know, sustainability is, is a really important thing. And, you know, if I were to go back, um, 
and, you know, look at, you know, different, you know, study abroad programs, like obviously AIFS is going to win just because of, of their commitment to, to creating a more sustainable future and, and being able to say like, yes, I put my money, money towards that and it's, it's going to, to a good place. Great. I love it. Um, how about uh, Alexis, while we, while we have you here, how about some of the challenges? What was one of the, or a few of the sort of initial challenges or adjustments that you felt like you had to make um, when you, when you first arrived in London? Are there any that, that sort of pop out at you? Yeah, I guess like one of the biggest things was really like getting used to public transportation for the first time. Cause like I said, I had access to a car. I could go on my own time. I could just go as far as I wanted to. Um, so coming to London, I was kind of, you know I could only have access to the public transportation when it was running. So a lot of that stuff was on like timetables and like you had to be there on a specific time in order to get. So it required a lot more like planning um, and I would also say um, just getting used to, um, I guess it was a small thing, but I guess um, using like, I'm talking about like washer and dryers. Dryers aren't very popular over in Europe because it's just one of those sustainable things that everyone just, it's kind of like, like the picture that's on the screen right now. Like everyone likes to hang their clothes. Um, so that was something else that I had to get used to and like doing like, um, like smaller not smaller loads, but just wearing my clothes more often um, to, to kind of save, also save money just overall and, and not buying so much like laundry detergent and like stuff like that. Um, and also having, you know, the bathrooms. I lived in a, um, like a dorm, pretty much like a traditional US dorm. Um, and so we had to share bathrooms. And so, you know, sometimes all the, all the shower stalls would be taken up. So I would say like, it's okay, I don't have to shower today. I'll, I'll just shower a little bit less and also reduce like my water usage too. So just being able to like, I guess, share my environment with so many other people using physical space and resources at the same time really made me uh, more aware of like how much, how much resources I'm using and also being able to make sure that other people can use the same resources too. Those are very, very good examples and also ones that I can remember thinking back to when I was studying abroad definitely uh, definitely resonate with me. Um, how about for you, Sadie? Any, any things that you thought of um, from initial, initial, initially when you studied abroad that were um, initial adjustments that you had to make? Yeah, I mean, I don't take norm, I didn't take normally long showers in the, to begin with. Like, I thought 15 minutes was a quick shower. Um, but when Alexis was uh, mentioning the shower situation, I just got reminded of the, my host family sent me like a list of like a, hello, we're your host family. We're so excited. Here are some rules. And one of the rules was your showers have to be 10 minutes or less. We take things very seriously regarding sustainability. Like we have had students in the past who take way too long showers and it would be really awesome if you just could do it quickly. And when I got there, my host mom was taking me around the apartment, showing me everything. She's like, this is a shower. Like, look at how long my hair is. I take five minute showers. So um, that was an initial like, all right, I guess we're doing this now. <laughs> and it worked. It, it worked out pretty well. And you don't have to let your conditioner sit in your hair for seven minutes for it to work. Um, so that was an initial like challenge, I guess. But it wasn't hard or anything for me. It was just like a, a transition. Um, and I mean, figuring out a new public transportation system and a new garbage system, also a transition. But if you think about it, it's kind of like a fun puzzle to, to get back and forth. One really great thing I do have to say about Berlin specifically is that there's no closing time. There's always a public transportation option somewhere. So I feel very lucky that I didn't have to think about that too much unlike a lot of the other cities. Um, because there's always a bus. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Um, Paula, do you have any other, any other yeah, questions? I think um, maybe just how, um, I, I like how we talked about the challenges and from my work on campuses, working with students in Europe and in Latin America, I know that we always have to, you know, give them a heads up in the beginning to kind of explain to them that, um, things are gonna change and 
they're going to have to adjust to the local way of doing things. Has your view of how we do things in the U.S. changed at all? Have you? What do you think about the the American lifestyle and how we view sustainability and and the environment and taking care of our earth and the way we live every day? I would say just like going abroad and coming back in terms of like culture shock, I think it was more apparent to me coming back how very much individualistic um, culture is here in the United States. And part of that is it makes, you know, efforts to reduce climate or the impacts of the climate crisis a lot more difficult. Um, and I think it's, you know, making a general statement. Um, of course, there are people who, who don't fit into this category, but at least like where I live, I live in a very um, rural area of the United States. And it's it's difficult to live in an area where, where sustainable practices and methods aren't, they're not easily accessible and they're not very well supported and funded via public and private, um, you know, means of funding. Um, so it's hard, I think, to get, I guess, everyone on board, like on page with like doing, you know, collective action and really seeing um, the impacts of that. Because I think, um, you know, part of my learning is um, from a class that I took kind of about um, climate crisis in general is, you know, a lot of like natural disasters that happen. Um, you know, in other parts of the world that are happening as a direct result of, of climate crisis. I think a lot of people like see that happening like on TV or on the radio and think, oh, well that's, you know, that's a them problem. That's not a me problem. Even though we're all breathing the same air, we all live on the same planet. It's, it's all, it all affects us in the end. So I think, you know, in Europe, I feel there's a more sense of, of collective action and, and more commitment um, from the greater population of people of like accepting like, okay, this is how we're gonna live. And I'm, I'm willing to make sacrifices to make sure that there is a world to live in tomorrow and, and you know, centuries, you know, in the, in the future. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Katie, go ahead. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. I absolutely agree with what Alexa said. Very well said. Um, I definitely, did have that like reverse culture shock coming back to the US where I was pretty much annoyed with everything that was happening here. <laughs> I just couldn't, like I was also in Europe for the Extin Extinction Rebellion stuff and we were talking about it in every single class. We were like talking, I was talking about my host family and all this stuff and everyone is just into it and it shouldn't be a huge deal, but it is a huge deal. If that makes any sense, yeah. like it's just a part of life to be, yeah. to want. It's not political to want a better, cleaner, more sustainable world. Yeah. Um, and when I came back to the U.S., I was just annoyed. Or like when I, when my mom would take a twenty-minute shower, I would get annoyed. Or when we would <laughs> use the drying machine, I would get annoyed. Um, and like. I realized I can't control what everyone does, but I can control what I do and I can try to talk about it to as many people as I can. Um, and that's like what I'm trying to do here and what seems like we're all doing. Um, I'm not as annoyed now, but just changing that Again. annoyance to action. Action, good for you. Yeah. I think that in my experience, it I I have I struggle too with the individual good versus the collective good, and um, and that is a big issue I think that we face here, right? That I, I'm going to do what makes me happy, what makes me comfortable, what makes me wealthy or rich versus what's better for everybody, and for me in the long run, but better for everybody. So yeah. I agree. Excellent. Well, um, that's fantastic. I would love to know from both of you, uh, what was your favorite part of, of studying abroad? Would anyone like to start? Yeah, I can start. I would say definitely my favorite 
part are really just like the people that I was able to meet. Um, some of the professors that I got to work with and take classes from, I'm connected with them on LinkedIn now. I still kind of like maintain conversations with them about my academic work because they they showed such a great interest in, in me and my successes, which felt really nice, like having that support system on an academic level. Um, and like one of them was able to, or he, my professor for my British fantasy course invited me to present at this symposium happening with another university. And I was the only women speaker, the only American speaker, the only undergraduate speaker. So I was representing a lot of different, you know, identities. So it was really cool to be able to have that opportunity and, and just have that connection with that professor still because of that opportunity. Um, so professors aside, I, you know, my friends that I made there definitely made the experience so much worthwhile and as an introvert you know going into a study abroad experience I wasn't too worried about like not being able to make friends but it was definitely like on the list of like top five things that I was anxious about or like eager to see what is it like because it's really it felt like starting college all over again like you know moving in on the first day like my undergrad at my home university it's a whole nother level just going to study abroad because you're kind of like restarting and like turning all of those wheels again of making friends making connections but I think studying abroad makes it really easy because everyone is pretty much there for the same reasons you know academic things could kind of vary a little bit um, but everyone probably loves travel everyone you know is very fond of, of diversity and trying new things and being adventurous um, and like I two of my closest friends um, were actually going to be reuniting this summer um, in Hawaii which I'm so excited about and I know like my friends that I've made from my study abroad experience are going to be there for, like with me for the rest of my life these are like lifelong friends that I'm going to have connections with and I, I hope to maintain for the rest of my life which is is really special and I'm really glad that I got you know, those personal connections with people while I studied abroad, you know, making my time there so special. And also like coming back to the United States, I have just like all over the country, I could put little pins of, of where I have friends. And, and if I need to go somewhere to visit, like, hey, can I crash at your place? Stuff like that. So really like the networking and just like connections that I've made were definitely my favorite part of my study abroad experience. Yeah, I love that. And um, and we have a follow-up question in the chat, which is, um, how did studying abroad elevate your education in your field of study, if, if at all, um, in comparison to your college uh, in the United States, like in, in, in comparison to your, you know, your studies here in the U.S.? Yeah, I would say like just the the academic system in London and, and probably a lot of universities within different countries are so much different than the United States. Um, and and because I'm an English major, um, so some of my classes are obviously very different from the rigor of, say, a nursing student or a biomedical engineering. Um, so a lot of my my courses are very much discussion based, um, very much, you know, I write papers and put my own thoughts and, and do research, stuff like that. Um, and coming to London, um, it was kind of similar, but, you know, things like, you know, daily attendance going towards your, your overall class grade, not a thing over there. Um, and, you know, daily quizzes or, or homework assignments that you're turning in and receiving grades, like, very frequently throughout the week. Um, over in London, it was very much like you have a midterm exam and you have a final exam, and that is all your grade is for that class. So it's very important. It's like, I would say like that kind of a great emphasis almost requires you to go to class every single day just because you have to be ready for those exams um, in, in order to get a good grade in the class and also just succeed overall. And I would say um, just being able to also interact with so many, you know, di different people because um, I got to in my classes take some classes with people who are from the United States with me in the AIFS program, but I also got to take classes with students who were attending the university like the international student university that I was at um, from all different kinds of places in the world and that's not necessarily something you know the the scale of diversity that I would have had at my home institution. So being in my English classes or some of the English classes I took over there, just being able to engage in discussion um, with just people of diverse backgrounds and different, um, you know, lived experiences was, was very meaningful. And I kind of, you know, coming back to the United States, I'm very much geared towards, you know, engaging or participating activities where I can kind of learn from others. Um, like since coming back, I have participated in, 
um, an activity that my university does and it's called Conversation Club. And it's a, a safe and fun environment for international students and domestic students to just get together and, and just talk about different topics. Cause it's really cool for domestic students just to learn from you know, all these cool stories that, that international students have to share. And, and also it's a place for international students to practice their English and then really be able to be comfortable um, not only succeeding in their classes, but being able to just have a fun, casual conversation with someone is like such a huge and, and very pivotal, um, you know, skill to be able to have, especially coming to the United States. So it's really changed, um, you know, how I behave in the classroom, but also just, you know, how I choose to spend my time um, just, just learning from others too, for, for personal reasons. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, and then uh, Sadie, what was the best part of your study abroad experience and maybe some of the tips that you could provide to somebody who is thinking of studying abroad themselves? Yeah, all right. So definitely the people I met were a highlight, but also just like Europe's incredible and beautiful and all other countries. Like I studied abroad in China with a different program and that was incredible and beautiful. And just the fact that you have a home in another part of the world is like the top, like top three feelings of life, I think. Like I have a home in Berlin, I have a home yeah. in Boston, I'm home in Shanghai. Like it's, it's a lovely feeling. And just the fact that you get to know a place so well. And with that, you know, the people there, you know, the architecture, you know, how to get from A to B. And you like know your favorite coffee shop or whatever, um, or the best grocery store. And I think that was like the, the best thing of all time for me personally. Um, with regards to tips for study abroad in general, I would say just go in with an open mind, do a little bit of research beforehand, but not too much because you just, you get to learn when you're there. And the only way to learn when you're there is to be accepting of the culture, the customs, the language, the everything. Once you're there, you don't have to completely change yourself, but you do have to be respectful of the place that you're in and the people you're around. Um, and to try to say yes to more things. Uh, there were days where I was like, I wanna lie in bed and I have homework and I don't wanna go on this arranged trip, but I said yes and I was so happy for it. Um, for example, there was this one trip, we went into the middle of nowhere in the middle of Germany in a town called Vinegarode, and I saw the tiniest house that I've ever seen. And then I saw a castle and we went on a hike and it was fantastic. And just things like that, just like say yes. And like, if you wanna push yourself, this is the time. As for the differences in elevating the studies, I study international business. So it's really pertinent to my career to get out and go see the world firsthand. Cause we talk about all these different cultures in our classes and I have a global business strategy and whatever. We're like, Germans are this way and um, like Austrians are this way and Spanish people are this way, but you don't know that until you go there and experience it for yourself. So um, that's like the, it's been a big help and we expect all our international student, international business students to go abroad. Um, I do wanna <laughs> keep it short, sorry. Um, so I will leave you with that. But also another tip is to just ask questions, come to these info sessions. I could not stop asking questions before I went abroad. I was calling my student like, rep person um, from AIFS, I think her name was Susanna. Yep, Susanna. All the time. And asking <laughs> my friends who are upperclassmen every single question all the time. I'm sure it was a little annoying, but it helped. And people are always excited to talk about study abroad. So hopefully it wasn't too annoying. Yeah. I'm gonna tell Susanna that because she's gonna love it. Yeah. I called her. She's gonna love it. She's, <laughs> she's gonna love it. I promise you. Um, that's why we do what we do. We, yeah. we want to be those people. So uh, never, ever, ever 
ever feel badly for that. Um, we are going to move just now to a, a tips slide that we have. Um, and then that's going to be it for the formal part of the presentation. Um, we're going to wrap up uh, recording. And then if anybody has any follow up questions, um, Austin, we can chat about your question that you had uh, earlier on in the presentation. And any other questions that you might have about AIFS, we can talk a little bit about your background and what you're looking um, for in terms of more information. So with that, we have some tips related uh, specifically to sustainability. Um, you know, of course, carrying a reusable water bottle is something that um, people, depending on, you know, maybe where they are in the United States, might have varying levels of familiarity with, with having their own water bottle. Um, some parts of the country are much more familiar with doing that, some less so. Um, similarly with reusable bags, some states now that's required um, in grocery stores, for example, and some others not so much. Um, taking shorter showers, I'd say 75% of our study abroad students come back saying they've taken shorter showers abroad yeah. than they would have here, right? Um, similarly, learning not to depend on dryers, clothes dryers, um, clothes dryers rather, um, uh, is something that is a big part of conservation efforts. Um, so that's definitely something that, you know, you can, you can start, start practicing here, um, you know, working on different types of, uh, of dietary and, and consumption um, practices can definitely be part of it. Recycling and mindful consumption, as we've talked about already. Um, learning more about what mass transit options and um, public transit options there are. And then, of course, volunteering abroad and at home. Anything else anybody would like to add before uh, we finish up here? I think maybe just another bullet point that could be added to the slide is uh, like shopping for things way less because you're not working, you're not making money usually. So mm -hmm. you can't like go out and buy a new dress for like to go out to the club or something like that. You can't, or if you're not in a situation financially, you can't just like go out and buy, a, I don't even know, like a hat or whatever. Um, so just purchasing less things and then you realize like, Maybe I don't need to be shopping once a week, twice a week. Um, and that's way more sustainable because that's always the most sustainable option is to not consume okay. the things. Plus getting it back home, right? Yeah. You always you always end up having an overweight bag and you well, you know. Yeah. Um, so we have a list here of some resources. Um, of course, we have folks in our office um, that you can speak to. There are a lot of different resources, including our student resources page um, that you can go to to get additional information related to your own student identity, related to academics related to locations that you might want to study. Um, and then if you are interested in getting more information, if you would like us to reach out to you proactively, um, you can scan this QR code and that will get you um, basically on our information list. We'll send you info about scholarships, program deadlines, things like that. And with that, uh, I thank you all. I appreciate you coming today and um, I look forward to continuing this conversation.